everyone's end goal mm. to get funded. But it's then where do you go from there? If that is your one and only goal, you if you get there and then you're like, where do I go from there? If you built the skill and you're profitable, even if you're trading small amounts, that's where you build from. Welcome everyone to another <laughs> Words of Wisdom podcast. I'm today joined by Pat. Um, how do you pronounce your last name, Pat? Frain, is it? Frain, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Perfect. Pat, all the way, I was going to say from Nottingham, but I, <laughs> <laughs> speaking beforehand, Bye. I learned you from Lincoln, so yeah. it's not too far away. Um, uh, but thank you for coming. No worries. Thank you for having me on. No, no, definitely. Delicious. And uh, I know I uh, sort of interrupted your couple's trip to London. No, it's all right. <laughs> um, but how have you been finding London so far? Yeah, good. Busy. Very busy. busy. But, uh, super hot. Yeah, super hot as well. Viz is in all black. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this. This is uh, a common mistake of mine. Uh, to be fair, I should have learnt by now. But in terms of, uh, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? You know, okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, my name's Patrick, 21 from Lincolnshire. Um, come from a small town called Sleaford. Probably no one would ever heard of it. But um, yeah, I got into trading about two years ago, right at the start of COVID. Um, so I just had a lot of free time looking at ways to make money um, and came across Forex. Uh, luckily, I never got scammed with signals or anything like that. Um, so I did get in a good group at first, um, kind of like retail strategies like breaking resistance, breaking uh, support and resistance and stuff mm. like that. Um, did that for about a year, no real constant success, um, a bit here and there. Kind of going through FTMO challenges, just blowing them, um, stuff like that. I did pass one um, and then flop the verification, mm. but that just showed no kind of consistency um, and stuff like that. And then I came across um, SMC concepts from my dad's mate. Um, <laughs> we went to a birthday party, I think, and I knew he traded before. Yeah. Um, and we kind of just got talking about it um, and he kind of led me down there. Um, so I joined one community uh, in July last year, so I've been doing that for about a year now, um, mm -hmm. and ever since then, um, it's been going really well. Yeah, so amazing, man! It's really good so, to hear. Yeah. And uh, I was—I didn't think you were 21. First, yeah, of all. 21. I, know we, <laughs> I remember when you said it outside. I was like, 20, 21. Just uh, in May, so yeah, 21. It's so. Amazing, man! I always say to people, um, obviously, it's not a massive age gap between us, but it's no. be five, six years. But yeah. in terms of you know how young we are and how many years, hopefully, we still have ahead. Exactly. That's a, it's a, big chunk of time and yeah i always say to people like yourself similar with krishna for example who's a similar age i always say like you guys are way further ahead than where we are at now it's crazy because you, know? you even see like 18 year olds getting into it and mm. i think i'm early but then you look at them and they've got so much time that's it but it's so usually much. the case where they feel like they don't have <laughs> they yeah. don't have time they need yeah. to get it now they're like like we say you want to start like 20 but they're like 16 17 and they're starting so i yeah. think that's kind of the earliest you kind of see it yeah normally yeah and um <clears throat> But it's really good, like in terms of your journey, you know, two within, yeah, two years within two yeah. years to be able to get to where you are now. Still a long way, still a long way to mm. go. But but like in good. that two years is amazing because yeah. it took me three years to even get out of the retail mindset. Yeah. And to show any sort of consistency. Yeah. It's hard to shift your mindset because you've got to look at the markets a whole different way. You've got to mm. cut out everything. But then again, like it, for some people, it works. Like for example, with FDMO, that the interview which just come out with the highest payout. Mm. If you look at his charts, he's got indicators on it and stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, if you have an edge in the market and you follow your rules, then you can do whatever, really. That's it. Like, and, um, you know, it's a, it's a great marketing technique to be able to be like, oh, this way is the only way. Yeah. You know, like yeah. whenever you see a YouTube ad, it's always pretty much along them lines where it's like, you know, stop doing these sort of charts or stop doing, yeah. you know, looking at the market in this way. Only this way works. But it's, it's all just nonsense, really, to attract people, you know, and yeah. try and steer people off looking at anything else. But I always say, like, and just as you said, like, it doesn't matter how you trade. It's about how you how you trade, you know. Yeah. It's about how you take the style that you're looking at and make it your own and make it repeatable and follow the confluences and stack yeah. it together, um, whether that's indicators, whether that's fundamentals, you know. Yeah. I've seen traders who primarily focus on fundamentals and yeah. then have, say, support resistance. And that's it. In terms of technicals, that's it. Yeah. But they're using the fundamentals, really. And I've seen them, and they do well. <coughs> yeah. And um, I've seen people who use, 
all sorts of indicators do well. I've seen people who use SMC well, but I've also seen people who use SMC badly yeah. you know, and, and indicators badly. Yeah. You know? And it's always the mindset. Yeah. You know, that's the one thing that you could take any of these traders with any different style. What is the thing that you know, is um, is repeatable and is commonplace yeah. amongst them all? It's the mindset. You've got to believe in your trading plan as well. For example, I could give someone my plan or you could give someone your plan. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if they take a few hits, they'll start to go away from it and start that's to change it. I think that's one reason why signals don't really work too yeah. much because um, you know in terms of those signals it's that person's style mm. you know, right they might be they might be even profitable month to month mm. giving out these signals but yeah. it's that person's style so it all it takes is you to miss a trade or not take a trade or even getting late or getting yeah. late yeah and it's completely different yeah you know and that's why you know, I've had people who message me like, oh, do you provide signals? And I always reply like, the signals don't work. Simple. No, that's what I'm like as well. Mm. You're just chucking your money away. You may as well go to the casino. Yeah. 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 Fortunately, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are finding themselves in that yeah. sort of realm. And uh, ah, the gambling aspect. I always, I think I talked about it with an uh, album where we were saying like, a lot of people are just gambling. Mm. They just don't realize it. Yeah. Right. They just claim it to be trading. They have yeah. that label of trading. And it is very true. Like if you don't do the right steps, you know, have the an actual strategy, a plan and, and be, try and be disciplined towards that. You are just gambling. Them, yeah. Right. And, you know, that's probably why we've seen the sort of regulation increase. You know, like when I first started, you could get a one to five hundred leverage account in the UK with a yeah. UK broker. But obviously now you can't. No. And uh, as you've seen, even like IC markets, you have to go to IC markets global yeah, to be able yeah, to get that. Yeah, so even like IC markets domestically, their rules have changed. Yeah. And that's why people talk about uh, prop firms, you know, yeah. that will change. You know, it's not going right now, especially now. Now is a great indicator that we're going to see some change probably in the next, I don't know, maybe 12 months, 24 months around that period. Um, but because of the amount that are propping up yeah. and turning up and, and all different rules and offering all different amounts and it is aiding into that gambling mindset mm. because people suddenly are like, okay, if I pay 500 pounds, I can trade with. That's exactly what I was like. Yeah. I was going through it and I was like, I thought I'd get lucky. I thought I'd get lucky and it just never came. And even if you did pass it, you won't be able to get that first payout. And yeah. It's all about the consistency. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, it's it's very appealing for how they portray it. That's it, and it's uh, it won't last long. Like yeah. there'll still be prop firms, yeah. but the rules will change, yeah. right? There'll be a lot. There'll probably be some regulation, and uh, some some limiting aspects as well. Mm. So that's why we always say like it's not the end goal, mm. right? Focus on it now. It doesn't mean don't be scared. Like oh, it's going, so let me rush into it and all that. Because at the end of the day, before prop firms were around, there were still traders. Mm. And at the end of the day, if you built the skill and you're profitable, even if you're trading small amounts, that's where you build from. Uh, a lot of people, they focus so much on FTMO that they don't even try to trade a personal account, even if it's uh, $500 or £500. That's yeah. the everyone's end goal, mm. to get funded. But it's then, where do you go from there? If that is your one and only goal, you if you get there, and then you're like, where do I go from now? Yeah. But that's kind of only the start. That's how I've noticed when I got funded, it's, it's only the start. Mm. Um, but yeah, that should have And you been. probably realized it after getting fu uh, you know, pass, uh, failing a, a challenge, for yeah. example, and maybe passing one, then failing that, you yeah. then realize that okay, look, this isn't, this isn't the the place where I want to be. No. This isn't the end. No. Uh, but it's so natural to feel that way in terms yeah. of like this is the end. This is you know, as soon as I get this, everything's gonna be fine. Yeah. But a lot of people think there's a suddenly like it's less tension, less uh, stress when you have a yeah. funded account versus the challenge verification. But that's where, though the the stress of the say time parameters are away. That's where the greed steps in. Yeah. Because suddenly now, every trade could be money in your bank. Yeah, exactly. Could be. But that's that's the kind of thing. I had loads of messages when I did get funded back in, at the start of the year, and there was loads of people like, why don't you quit your job? Why don't you quit your job? Yeah. And I know, obviously, Alb, he just sacked off his job, and he said he regretted it, but he's done well for himself. But um, there's ways to go about it. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. the way I've gone about it, obviously, I still work full time. Um, I'm a duty manager in a gym. But I've been lucky enough to kind of reduce my hours and work kind of the late shifts. Mm -hmm. So with my so shifts focus kind of on the session. yeah, so Monday to Wednesday I get to start work at half three. Mm -hmm. So that gives me time to trade London, New York. So I'm doing well to get in a routine. So I'll trade kind of half seven till ten, and then ten till twelve I used to go to the gym or mm -hmm. walk the dog, listen to podcasts, and then twelve till three active in New York. That doesn't mean I'll be taking trades. I'll just be I'll be monitoring, um, and then I'll go to work. But um, I think I'm very lucky to be able to do that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. A lot of people work nine to fives and they can't do that. Whereas, yeah, even true. if you yeah. like getting a night job, um, 
that's the big struggle help. though isn't it like where you do have an actual like nine to five yeah and you don't have that flexibility and i always tell people like try and make it work for you so for example if you do work a nine to five let's say in the uk then frankfurt's your best friend yeah right frankfurt a little bit of london open depending when you have to leave yeah. for work but that's your best friend purely focus on that what a, yeah one of my fan friends who work nine to five they absolutely kill it in frankfurt like yeah. they'll they'll get like a one to five or one to ten and that'll be their day done and then they can go on and work that's it and but a lot of people they struggle with the fact like oh but what about opportunities yeah. in london or new york but you have to realize that if it's not realistic for you to do and you can't manage or maintain it properly like efficiently yeah. as a trader needs to why are you going to force you know yeah. the results are going to show that it's yeah. not possible yeah and um yeah I, I, similar actually i had someone I had a call with the other day where it was the same problem yeah uh, in terms of timing i said look just focus on frankfurt yeah it's enough like don't get me wrong there's not gonna be a trade every single day no but there's not a trade every single day in in you know every session if we look at them yeah. but it's about having that discipline to okay if there's not a trade no trade Leave it, day back tomorrow. Yeah. yeah and um but no it's good that you've got that position but how do you find like your mindset did you struggle at all when you say first got funded and then like going to work still or do you would you say you actually enjoy your job as well um yeah i do enjoy my job obviously a lot of it's on the computer, but I've been getting into a position now where I've been teaching classes. Mm. Um, so that's what you did. The four fitness four spin done. classes. So I did because uh, obviously people have been on holiday and stuff. Um, I've been covering classes um, and I've done like seven spins in a row now. That was my first day off Saturday and my legs were done. I was like to you in the group. <laughs> and then you had like, to walk around. <laughs> <laughs> I've done so many steps yesterday as well. My legs were killing this morning. But um, but yeah, it's a good element because I kind of start work at half three and then we'll have classes in the evening so it does split up the shift and it allows me to get my um, my fitness in yeah, as well so yeah, that's good. it is very good um, and the way our voter works I'll do a weekend every one in three so I'll have Thursday Friday off as well which mm. gives me the whole day to trade so perfect um, yeah it's I'm very lucky to do it obviously my boss is he, he understands the situation um, and he's been very good to me. So he's waiting for you to teach him or trade his money. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> the had, deal. <laughs> I've had quite a lot of people do that because, like, obviously, I used with my Instagram. I used to have a separate account for my trade and, mm. and then kind of a personal account. But I've kind of just put them into one now. Yeah. Um, and I have had quite a lot of people message me like, "Can you teach me? Can you teach me?" But then people who are saying that now, two years ago, they were laughing at me for it. So like, yeah, yeah, it's big how that mindset changes. Is, yeah. I've never really. Obviously, I've put one post about my profits, like because that motivated me two years ago. So I wanted to do the same for other people as well, mm. not to kind of flex or anything like that. But people see that and then they're messaging me like, "Oh, can you flip my five hundred pound and stuff like that?" Yeah. And they don't understand it. And I've had, um, I've had like two people now. There's one guy who's in his forties and he's asking me like, "Can you teach me?" And I've had him around my house and he's putting in the work, and it's amazing to see because mm. like he's forty got a house two kids and he's still wanting to get into it that drive yeah, yeah exactly so it all boils down to like what are your <coughs> motivations you know is it yeah. in the right place yeah, so like yeah. for him i could imagine i don't know him obviously but yeah. i would imagine you know having the two kids being 40 he know, wants to set up their kids yeah he wants yeah. to set up the kids he's more focused on exactly why he's doing it i would imagine an element of it isn't the, the get rich quick you know, because yeah. by that point, you've probably experienced a lot in life. Yeah. Uh, and something I was talking about in the, the last, I think the podcast I just dropped is like the statistics say the majority of successful people are in their 40s or 50s when they yeah. find success. So, and it might be down to life experience, you know, that you've sort of experienced life for X amount of time that you've yeah. experienced that things don't happen as you may think they happen yeah. or, you know, as quickly as you think they happen. And there's no point trying to rush. And these are things that really only experience can teach you. Because like, um, I think I spoke about this before as well. That I've met people where they say, I, I can't work. Mm. And not because they can't physically work, but because they don't want to. Mentally, mm. they're like, I, I, can't, I can't have a job. Yeah. It's just, I don't enjoy it. I hate it. That's the wrong mindset. Like, look at you. Yeah. Like, you're funded, consistent, but you're doing the right steps where I'm not going to fob the job off because yeah. it gives me more peace of mind. You know, I want to do things in the right steps. And um, But yet there's people who aren't even willing to get the job Mm. And they'll focus on the trading, but they have no financial foundation. Uh, they have no income, right? They have no skills, yeah. no experience. And they're assuming, okay, if I just go on charts, and most of the time they're not even learning anymore. They're just yeah. pretty much just turning up and trying to trade every day. Yeah, And uh, it's all in the mindset, yeah. you know? So like you doing what you're doing, um, you know, it just shows that is the right process, mm. you know? Because I did a similar one where 
uh, obviously I when I got into trading I had like learned I'd done a few businesses yeah failed those businesses so I'd already learned experience wise like things don't mm. go as as planned planned or yeah. as you may think they go especially in terms of uh, you know businesses mm. and uh, so I I'd, from experience been able to take that into trading while a lot of people obviously may not have had that experience or have never put themselves in the in the position to experience anything or to gain any insight into what it takes. Yeah, it's like with uni, like we were just talking about, like you go to uni for four years mm. with all the debt and you're not guaranteed a job and then people are coming in to trade and, and they expect to start money making money straight away. And there's yeah. no business where you can go straight into and start making money. That's Obviously, okay. a lot of people who trade, they do lose money at the start. Mm -hmm. But like you say, when you do get funding, you do get consistent, one or two payouts of that, it wipes it all. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, yeah. Then, and a lot of it comes down to rushing. Like, yeah. you really especially now like before when i started um there wasn't many options in learning wise yeah. and uh, a l the options that were available were quite expensive yeah um but now you have this opportunity where and obviously back then demo accounts still existed but now you have these opportunities where there's a lot of education for free yeah. on youtube right yeah. Um, and obviously, Baby Pips has always been there. The OG has always been there. That's what I there. suggest to anyone. Yeah, Just same. Do that, and then we'll talk after. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, but there's so many communities now. Now, don't get me wrong. There's probably loads of bad ones, but mm. there are you know a handful of good ones. They're coming and, out now. Yeah. yeah, and they're and they're well priced as well, yeah. so it's, it's quite affordable. And um, so, really, your outgoings wise, you could have zero because there is a lot of information on YouTube. Yeah. But it's good to have a community. Good to have a mentorship. That sort of more focused tunnel vision. Yeah. But they're more affordable, so really that's your only outgoings. But in terms of trading, you don't need to lose anything mm. until you really see any form of consistency because yeah. you have the demo account, you have the free trials. Yeah. But people aren't willing to do that, yeah. as you say, that they, they want to get money, you know, make money straight away. Maybe part partly down to sort of uh, how trading looks on the outside, mm. you know, because like um, you know people don't look at the whole journey. So like those people who are messaging you now, yeah. saying like, "I'll oh, flip my account, teach me." You've been probably laughing before. Yeah, you become an overnight success for yeah. years and years of, and that's all they see. Mm. That's all they see. They won't see like you up all night doing work, doing yeah. back testing, doing exactly. markups, and there's there's so much more to it. But I think a lot of that stuff is coming out now. Like mm -hmm. people are seeing, okay, you do have to put in a lot of work to get there. Yeah, but, so those, I think it's things like this, like having conversations with, yeah, between exactly. traders. You see people's journeys. Mm. And that's why communities are are good. Yeah. Uh, exactly. In terms of like, you will realize very quickly that look, there are people from all over the world, all different backgrounds, but yet they're all experiencing a very, very similar thing Yeah. in terms of what issues they're having in trading, yeah. how long they've been trading, money that's been lost, yeah. money that's been gained. And it's beautiful to then see in a community when you're seeing people rise up in terms of their... Their, their levels of uh, mm. consistency and understanding and confidence. Yeah. Um, and then when others can see, hey, this guy's been in here pretty much same time as me. And he was struggling, like he was sending that, he was struggling, having losing streaks, not really seeing any consistency. Yeah. And now, not like a it's day later or a week later, it's normally a month, at least two, three months later, mm. suddenly they're sharing consistency. A lot better positive mindset. And it comes from not just having the mentor, not just having the education or the community, but it just comes from uh, probably within doing that work yeah uh, and then those other elements being a benefit and sort of a driving force yeah. you know it was like what cal said obviously he was talking about a lot of people go to buy courses but they don't concentrate too much on the community mm. and i said to my friend yesterday i was like join a community join vipers whatever um because you're surrounded by the people who have done it and the people who are at your journey as well mm. so and obviously if you, you kind of join in a tight-knit group you can ask questions and they'll answer you. There's a lot of people who answer you straight away. Yeah. Like he's in a big group at the minute and he'll try and ask a question and he'll get no response. Um, it gets difficult, you know? Yeah. That's a hardship, like, because you can have a good community with, like, they are genuine people who, who run them. Yeah. But it's just that when there's too many people going in, it's unfortunate because then it, it's, it is hard. I can imagine, like, for me, I can maintain what we have now. Yeah. I could I could maintain more people coming as well. Uh, there's, that's why we also have multiple mentors so that it happens. Yeah. And it works, but I know for a fact I would never let it get out of control where it's not manageable because then the whole concept of it is lost. Yeah. You know, the whole principle behind it gets lost. And uh, I feel like people set out with the right intention, and then when obviously loads of people join, and then they see like, hey, we are making a lot of money from the business mm. side of it, um, they might kind of just write it off like hey, it's mm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they do. And don't get me wrong, I've seen people where they've got massive communities and they do try and have loads of coaches, but it's just. It was yeah, it was like the first community I job when I started SMC. I mean, I learned everything from there, mm. and that is what changed my trading. 
but there were a lot of people in there, a lot of people, and there were a lot of coaches as well. And luckily at the time, um, Alby was in there and mm -hmm. I kind of just stuck to him. His videos were all I kind of watched, so his trade recaps, um, all of them, I just kind of stuck to one and I think that's kind of the key because when you start yeah. to look at others, you'll start to change bits or like take bits and sometimes it does work, sometimes... You try and mesh them. Yeah, them. like it, it sometimes does work, but if you just stick to one simple plan and keep hitting it, it that's the best way yeah. to go, I think. Well, I, from, from like observing on the outside, uh, I would say that probably through joining that community though, yeah. you kind of then surrounded yourself in a sub community, if that makes sense. That's kind of picked people you resonated with, I'd imagine. And yeah. now you have this sort of circle. That's literally what we did. I think we've got a group now and there's about, I think there's about 10 of us and we're all like really good mates and stuff like that. We've never met before. We've got that coming up. <laughs> the internet but, friends. Yeah, <laughs> the internet friends. You, I mean, you talk to them more than my missus or my family. Trust but, me, um, yeah, no. um, Yeah, we kind of just kind of came away from the community and made like a small little one and mm. went through that. And I think that helped a lot of us because we were all killing it in there. We were all doing really yeah. well. And I think it's nice to see. It's that energy as well that I refer yeah, to exactly. as like a mastermind, right? Yeah. So like, um, I always say it within our group is like, look, you know, reach out to people if people are nearby to you. Yeah. You know, reach out to people if you resonate with that person. Yeah. And then start to work together, you yeah. know? Uh, do weekly calls with each other for accountability, you know, do get on uh, charts together and back test, you know? Because yeah. that driving force, it's like having a gym partner, yeah. right? Like, I know I work probably. 10 times more efficiently and consistently in the gym mm. when I have a partner just mm. because you're holding each other accountable. Yeah. You're pushing each other. I'll probably push more weight as well because I have that uh, mindset of, oh, I'm, it's not, not competition, but it's like you don't want to push each other. Fail. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. fail in front of each other. You want to you create results together. Yeah, exactly. And um, plus, you know, you have that sort of support system as mm. well. Um, Trading is a lonely game. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, it's you against you, mm -hmm. but you can have a lot of people to be there for you yeah. to keep you accountable, to be there when you're down. I think in trading, you have a lot of downs, mm -hmm. but the ups are what keep you going. At the end of the day, you've got to go back to your why. Like mm -hmm. my why is to give back to my parents, to be free. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of others as well. For example, giving back to my dad when we went to that football game, seeing him happy is the best thing ever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And to think, to think that's come from trading, like if I wasn't trading, I wouldn't be able to afford that. But it's the fact that I can give back to them and make them happy. And I think, when you're not making money, it's hard for them to kind of see where you're going because mm. they don't see they oh, don't yeah, see yeah. it all. They don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I tried explaining it to my parents, and they were like, "What?" <laughs> but now, now they kind of see it. They they've always the supported. Result. They've always supported me. They've always said, "You do you. Mm -hmm. We'll support you. Whatever you want to do." Like before, before I got into training, I was supposed to be going to America for a football scholarship, but that was art that was also education as well. Mm. COVID kind of messed that up, but. I made a bad into a good. Like obviously, COVID yeah. was a terrible situation yeah, for a lot of yeah. people, but it that allowed me to have so much time to learn, and I kind of put that bad into good, and it's been the best thing I've done. Yeah, no, hundred percent, man. Because I uh, I talked about that back then when the lockdowns were in place. I yeah. said like, look, it, it's obviously incredibly bad in yeah. terms of you know people losing their lives and and people being separated from families and yeah. so on and so forth. However, taking if you can take a situation like that and understand what can you benefit from, from. it. So, you know, being isolated at home, having all this free time, you know, a lot of people being on, um, was it work from home or even on- um, Like Zoom and stuff. On Zoom, but also a lot of people were on furlough, so they didn't even yeah. have to work, they were getting paid. I was lucky enough to be on that as exactly. well. Exactly, yeah. so like you have this opportunity where you're getting 80% of your wage. Yeah. And you can then use this dedicated time, which for some people was months. Like You've either got two things, you can sit back, watch Netflix all yeah. day, game, or you can Decide learn another skill. Yeah, and that skill upgrade can and change your life. Can change your life, exactly. Like, And the thing is, like, it's not just trading. Like, the skills to be learning at this time are, you know, um, sort of the internet-based, social yeah. media-based, like, because that's where the world is continuously going to go. Yeah, and It's only going to expand more. So, yeah, like, yeah. there are so many jobs right now in the VR space, yeah. you know, the crypto, the uh, blockchain space, yeah. for example. So like, and even just generally like social media wise, filming, right? Mm -hmm. Like this this studio here mm -hmm. is a great business concept. Yeah. And no doubt, probably within the next few years, there's gonna be so many of these in every major city and yeah. probably even the smaller cities yeah. because it just makes sense. And it's a good business model as well. Mm -hmm. And in terms of skill set, if we compare it to trading, it's not gonna take too much no. to set something like this up right nice. um but you are right though like a skill like trading and that's why i believe it is so appealing mm. it's because it has that it can change your entire life right once you have that skill 
and that understanding of the market and more importantly that discipline you can quite dramatically over a, a couple of years mm. be in a whole different position yeah i think the passion has to be there i think a lot of people do it for the mindset a lot of people do it for the money and of course we all do it for the money but mm. the passion for the charts has to be yeah, there yeah, because yeah. all the work you got to put in you have to be happy like at the end mm. of the day if you're not happy then no money in the world could make you happy so yeah so like That's what they say, they you, say money is infinite. Yeah. So if you're try, trying to chase money as happiness, like you'll, inf you'll always be chasing because yeah, it doesn't yeah. end. Yeah, there's no end then. And, um, you know, it's like that classic thing. You know, some people, they try and say like, oh, I need to get a partner to be happy. I mm. need to get, get in a relationship to be happy. Or I need to buy this thing to be happy. But the truth is, if you're not happy already, those things, you know, you're just going to go into those things and then that unhappiness will still be there. Yeah. Right. There's not, uh, there's not something that fills the void unless it comes from within. Like you exactly. fill that void yeah. within. And, um, you know, a lot of people do come into trading. I think I talked about this before where they just, they're not passionate about charts. They don't no. care about what is, what do the charts actually represent yeah. or how is this impacting this economy? You know, like even though I'm not a fundamental trader, I still find it highly interesting to hear yeah. about fundamentals yeah, yeah. and what that means for that economy and what does that mean for the state of the economy? Just like with uh, what's happening now with obviously Boris Johnson resigning for yeah. like, I'm not bothered about the politics, no. but I am interested. Like, hey, okay, How he's resigning. Yeah. Yeah. How's that going to impact the market? Who's looking to take over? Yeah. How, you know, what history do they have? Like, it's interesting, Yeah. right? And that's where the passion comes from. But there's a, a lot of people where, let's say Boris Johnson resigned, the pound's going crazy and they don't care. They're not, they're, they're not bothered about why it's happening. They're just like, oh, how can I make money from this? Or yeah. they've lost loads of money from it. And then they're questioning like, why is this happening? And yeah. it's like, if you were truly passionate about it, you would already know. Like you would go and research, you would find out, and you'd mm. be happy to find out, um, and you'd be interested to find out. But when it's just purely on the money, it's never going to work. I, I think, don't think it ever works. Yeah, I think as well, times like this, people if they don't know what they're doing, they'll lose a lot of money. And I think oh, yeah, the best yeah. traders there, they'll step back and go, right, let's have a bit of time, mm. start to see what's happening, and then we'll we'll follow the market. That's it. Well, that's what I did this week. So like on Monday, I caught a good trade. Yeah. And then we had that very impulsive move on EU down. Yeah. I said, okay, I'll just take a step back. Like, I'll just relax a little bit and let the price action play out. Yeah. Mm. And the thing is like, a lot of people will say that and then they'll fight the urge to get into the market mm. and they'll get into the market anyway. Um, but you know, there's a lot of power in just taking a step back, not worrying about, okay, there was a, oh, there was a position I could have taken. Yeah. But really, if you said you're not too clear and you want further price action, just take a step back. Yeah. There's no problem in being patient. And, no, and if anything, there's so much more benefits in being patient because as long as you're not risking in the market, you're not losing. Yeah. Right. And that's that longevity. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, especially with like these prop firms, is that they need to trade every day. I can't yeah, hold over yeah. the weekend. Or I've only got 30 days until my profit split or 14 days, you know, yeah. for my profit split. And, you know, they're just stressing themselves out. Because the beauty is like, I would get it if, let's say, FTMO were emailing you every day, like, hey, you've got one day left yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> you haven't made 5% or you haven't done this or whatever. But they're not. No. Right, no one's pressuring you. No. no one's telling you to do anything. It's just all in your head. Mm. Yeah, just as like the uh, the the solutions are all inside. Like you can find the solution once you fix the inside. The problems are all in there too. Yeah. So it's just learning to sort of put that jigsaw uh, puzzle together, you know, for yourself. And as you said, like it's a lonely game. Uh, but you know, if you do have good people around you to just even even if they're not traders, mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing. Like if you have driven or even successful friends or people around you, yeah. they will be able to advise you, even if they're not traders, because they'll it's know. like, yes, yeah, so they'll know, they'll yeah. know the mindset that's yeah. necessary, the, even just the general problems of patience or greed or any of these things, they would have experienced it through their drive and through their journey as yeah. well. And um, that's why it's good to have people with different skills around you too, mm. because you can just uh, sort of mastermind that knowledge and experience. Yeah, I think one thing that helps with that is obviously less chart time, less time mm. being on the charts. Yeah. Um, one thing what helped me was just setting setting alerts at POIs where you want to be trading from and yeah. then go and do your thing, go for a walk, go walk your dog, whatever. That's it, yeah. Um, there was a time where I was always on the charts and always looking for trades, but like you said, you just got to take a step back and just do other things because at the end of the day, we do it for freedom. You don't want to be stuck at your screen all day. It's probably worse because then you yeah. get the hunchback yeah. coming in and then you got, killing. your eyes are going. Yeah, um, Yeah. no, I've done that before. And, and what it normally results in is is you might have a good day here and there mm. where you absolutely smash out the day, mm. but usually it's just inconsistent, yeah. right? It's, the risk to reward might sort itself out and you might still be profitable at the end of it, yeah. but it's uh, way more stressful, mm. um, you know, a lot more, you know, like you said, lack of freedom, mm. right? So you just tag to the chair all day. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, like it's not, it doesn't make sense to do that either. 
to be fair, because what you're assuming is that there's a trade all the time. Yeah. And it just shows a lack of uh, sort of understanding of the charts and lack of sort of uh, sort of patience, really. Yeah. Because if you just sat there 24-7, yes, there's a move. And what I try and explain it is that there's an infinite number of ways you can trade the market. Mm. And there, yes, there is an infinite number of trades every single day. But if out of those infinite, you have one way, yeah. right? Which means then in a day, there might be zero that fits that one way. Yeah. Might be one that fits that one way. Might yeah. be 10 that fits that one way. Yeah. All that matters is that you're following that one way and any time it presents itself, you you take it. it. That's it. And um, and then when we get more specific with like trading uh, times, right? The session times. Mm. Why are you trading all day then? Because mm. then there's windows of time where it's just not advisable. Yeah, I think out of the 10 to 12 in the morning it's, is a big, big thing to do, obviously. The volatility goes down. It's a good time yeah. to have a break. Go to the gym. I mean, cardio, hit, hitting weights is it's massive. Like, it helps a lot, especially with the mindset as well. I think a big thing, um, obviously, the monk quote we do now. I've only done it for a week, but that's been amazing for me. That's great to hear. Um, yeah. Very well. I mean, um, I've even got a missus on it, so she's started. <laughs> she's added her st stuff in now. So it's good to see that as well. That's good. Um, like spread it around, really. That's what it's about, you know, like the Viper Monk mode. That for me was trying to create a different mindset. Yeah. So when people ask about it, I always say like it's just ch it's changing your lifestyle. Yeah. While some people might hear that and assume, oh, it means uh, like money, like or you know, trying to elevate in that way. But no, it's yeah. all mindset. Like yeah. it's like you're just what we're doing is holding each other accountable. Yeah. To uh, increasing our habits, healthier habits, more successful yeah. habits, and uh, it's not know, even like to do trade now. So we've got. I think I've got two things about trading, but the yeah. rest of it's all mindset. That's more what routine, I do outside though, yeah. of trading. Yeah, it's all about the routine. So like with the trading stuff, like for me, it says one to five. Yeah. But it's not as in I've hit a one to five every day. Yeah, what that yeah. is uh, in, like what I mean by that is I follow my plan every day. Yeah. So even, I still tick it off even if I take a losing trade, if I don't take a trade, because what that it represents to me is just following the plan. The plan. Yeah. Uh, but everything else is like water intake, reading, meditation, exercise, and so on. Mm. And um, these little things... They make a massive difference. They might not directly impact your trading. No. But they will directly impact your mindset, yeah. your mental health, your health. And uh, that was a big reason for it. Like yeah. we started it off as a, it used to be called the the Viper Challenge, right? Yeah. And it was uh, just running. It was like 5K, you know, doing 5Ks every day. Yeah. Um, on Monday to Friday, something along them lines. Started off like that. And then I slowly just adapted it and grew it mm. into what it is now. And um, you know, it's been so enjoyable to see probably by now, Every quarter we do about, it starts with about 30, 40 people normally. Mm -hmm. um, and then by the end of it, it drops down to about 10, yeah. 15, uh, which is expected. But we're quite serious with it. Like we do try and push each other and we're trying to, I'm trying to find new ways to do it, go about it as well yeah. and just make it even better because I get a lot of fulfillment when you're helping people in that way. Just, we're, I'm not directly doing anything. No. You know I mean, we just put the group you're together. You're kind of giving them a guide. Then yeah. They go on from that. Obviously Absolutely. you've got, I think there's four, four main ones what you have in there and then you create your others like your habits yeah yeah exactly so i have the the compulsory one yeah and then you have the ones that for the individual they know yeah, that will benefit know, them yeah and um but yeah no it's great to hear that you're enjoying that because yeah, uh by the end of the the 12 weeks hopefully i'll still be there <laughs> hopefully yeah, <laughs> yeah hopefully. um no but i i i know you will because uh, i can tell the mindset that was one thing i was going to talk about which was like in that circle that subgroup of yours because i yeah. i don't know exactly who's in it for example yeah, yeah. but i can kind of guess who might be in it yeah um but i've interacted with those individuals yeah, yeah and it's the same thing like the the vibe the mindset yeah is you can tell you know the strong it's strong and and the the genuine nature as well yeah open uh sort of nature as well like because i've only recently started interacting more with people online like mm. since i met alb and to be fair like with alb um we only messaged a couple times online before we then agreed to do the, his yeah. podcast yeah and um after meeting him as well like we just connected and we just like we talked a lot and then from kind of knowing him, I then was uh, sort yeah. of open to seeing all these different massive, people. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And like, it's massive. I think I met you, th well, I met you on Instagram through Alb. Um, but yeah, he's been there since day one to me. Mm. Like, I owe everything to him. Obviously, he always says you put the work in, but um, like everything, like he's always been there to reply to my messages and stuff like that. So mm. he's been he's been great. and. That's it, yeah. It's, 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 it, I think it, a lot of it does come down to having good uh, leadership or like having someone who can yeah. start that, you know, yeah. create that community or create that sort of good feeling. Yeah. Um, and it resonates, you know, it resonates with the right people. And then, you know, when you help and you're just there for those people, you mm. don't do anything in particular. Like it's not like you're literally steering their journey. You know, mm. you're just 
just there. Yeah. You know, you're just there to help or just there to yeah. advise or just talk to. Yeah. And uh, network with. Yeah, networking's uh, yeah. massive. Yeah. Big change for me. Obviously, when I was in my first community, I was barely talking in it. Obviously, it was quite big, but then we made our little group and the network, obviously, throughout, but you've met loads of people, like all of you, um, and like stuff like this. Like, if I didn't meet you, I wouldn't be on this, so it's a big opportunity for me. Um, but yeah, it's, networking's massive. It is, it really is, and I'm, I'm actually trying to focus on that, as we know, because yeah. like London... Uh, meet up in yeah. uh, August. Yeah. That is primarily a networking event. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to see how it goes because I haven't, I know they probably do exist, networking mm -hmm. events for traders, yeah. I bet. Uh, I've never actually searched for it, but I want to make one. I want, if it, if, depending how this one goes well, I think it will go uh, really yeah, well. Yeah, same. Um, for everything that I've got planned, I'm very, very excited for it. Yeah. But if it goes well, I think I want to do a regular sort of networking event. So rather than a Viper meetup, we'll still do those. Yeah. But um, have a specific networking event where it's just people from any community, any background, yeah. wherever, we can just talk. There know? is meetups, but I think they're all community meetups. Yeah. They're all like, you've got to be in the community for a meetup. Yeah. But from what I know, there's no kind of just a meetup anyone can kind of. That's go. what I want to do. I want to just start one um, just for, for myself, really. Yeah. <laughs> just for myself, because I want to network as well yeah. and I enjoy them. But, um, but I think it'd be valuable for others where it's just like, I, even if you're not in a, in any community, mm. you just I want to go speak to some traders. You yeah. Know? I want to go see what other traders are like and what their, yeah. their journey is. Because I think the beauty is, um, you know, for a lot of people who aren't in communities, who maybe have been a bit lonely, they just don't know, like, really that the struggle is universal. Like, everyone's going yeah, through very similar Yeah, that's the thing. Well, um, when I went around that guy's house a few days ago, he was like, I just didn't have anyone to talk to. Mm. And I was like, obviously, he lives, like, two minutes away from me. And, like, he was like... I've been doing it for a while and I've just had no one to talk to. Like he will not really in social media or anything. So if you don't if you're not really on social media, it's hard for you to network with people. Yeah. Um it would be, yeah. If you're not going for like meetups and stuff like that. So I think it's massive, like even if you're like asking questions or you don't know what to do, um, he had no one there. So it's really good to network. It really is, honestly. It's it's probably one of the, the best things you can do. Like yeah. because you the find good people. Goes up so much. Yeah, it faster. does. It does. Like don't get me wrong, I spoke on um the last podcast I did with uh, Krishna. Yeah. And uh, I talked about, like, I used to be around deadbeats, right? And I was a bit harsh with it. I was saying, like, yeah, I was just around deadbeats. I was a deadbeat and, you know, all this stuff. But going through that still, so like, I went through, like, a series of different deadbeat, like, groups, right? But through that, though, you do find, and this will probably be usually the case, where you find out of, say, 10 people, one's a gem, you know, mm. one's a good one, you know, mm. and you hold on to that person and they're the, you know, just one person is enough to yeah. help you to grow and see things in a different light and just to be there for you. Yeah. Um, I think a mistake I used to make when I was younger for sure was thinking that you need a big group of people, you know? Yeah, same You need here. 10, 15, 20 people. Yeah, yeah. But really, it, one Small person. Small type group. Yeah, one, yeah. even just one per, a good person, yeah. um, you know, on the same wavelength, who's you know driven and focused and, and just there for you a genuine person that's enough that's that's the same with me i've met someone um in covid to fair we went to go play football and we just got chatting and he he was trading i was trading and then he got into smc with me um he's only about six months into it but um he lives local for me so like it's amazing just to go around his house do stuff with um we're planning on traveling um hopefully in the new year um so like yeah he's got the same mindset as me um and it just works really well um you can go out for a drink or something and then talk trading or like go to someone's yeah. like house or something like that i mean people um, forget that to actually have fun yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah like i've i've uh met people where and i get it don't get me wrong the chart dedication and, and the time and and, and uh, putting in that work there's a balance yeah yeah you don't want to overwork definitely but. a balance like because then you will very easily learn to resent trading when you're doing all that work and the results aren't coming. Yeah. Um, you can very easily build a resentment mm. and start to question yourself. Like, yeah. oh, you know, maybe this is impossible or yeah. maybe uh, I'm not doing it right. Or, But really, it's, it might be a case where you're just spending that long that like you're just overthinking everything. Mm. Um, you know, usually, if I take a break, if I, if I feel unclear about structure and stuff and I, I take a break for yeah. a week, a few days, yeah. Not only do I enjoy the time off, yeah. but then when I come back, I'm normally extremely clear much. because now I've I've kind of given time to just play out a bit. I've mm. given time away where I'm not, oh, this little detail here, there, there, or mm. just going too deep, you know? Yeah. 
and take a step back, just seeing the bigger picture. Oh, okay, you know, if you're nice and calm. Yeah. But I, I see a lot of people where they really struggle to yeah. take any time off and, and just really struggle to... Uh, I've heard a lot of people where they're like, oh, I can't the weekend, I can't wait for the weekend to be over. Yeah. So I don't get it. Like, they're trading like crypto at the weekend or something. Yeah, or, the, or they're just literally begging for the Monday to come mm. for the market to open or Sunday night, right? And they're ready to analyze as soon as the market's yeah. open. And I just think like, for me, anyway, personally, I just don't think that's the right mindset. It was like when I went on holiday for my 21st, I was like, do I take my laptop? Do I take my laptop? <laughs> and Miss was like, no. I was like, well, I won't take it then. <laughs> and Honestly, like, it was good because I came back and I was like, right, let's go. Yeah, I felt yeah. so refreshed. More driven, more yeah. focused. And plus, you don't need to worry about, you know, when you're on holiday, uh, you know, you might not be in the right mindset. You open no. that chart up. No. You I'll make a mistake, your holiday is ruined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and people do that. And it's the same for me. Like, I've always said, like, holiday-wise, unless I'm in a location for X amount of time, and I know I've got free time, let's say if it's like Dubai. Dubai is a good example yeah. because the sessions are early, yeah. right? And they're, they're in different times, like easier times in the day. Um, but if I'm there for just a week, I'm not going to trade because no. I'm just going to enjoy myself. If I'm there for two weeks, probably still won't trade. But if it's longer than two weeks, for example, and I know what my schedule's like, mm. yeah, maybe I'll trade, yeah. right? But if there's no need to trade, I won't because no. then that's what my office is for. You know, yeah. That's what my my trading den, if you will, is for. Like yeah. I've built that so that when I want to be focused, I go in there and, and I focus yeah, and I yeah. trade. And if I can't be in there, I, even if I'm traveling in the UK, for example, I avoid trading. So if I go to my in-laws or my or my uh, my parents' house, um, I just won't trade. Mm. So I only be there a couple of days. And I, even though I'm in the UK still, I just won't trade because I like to trade from my desk. You know, yes, you can trade anywhere, but for the intricate style that we trade, I just, I just find like trading from the phone gets a very dangerous, opens a very dangerous Yeah, it's door. hard for me. I'd never trade. Obviously, I use that MT4 trade assistant. I think yes, you do I as do. well, yeah. And I don't think I'd ever be able to trade without that. Mm. Um, obviously, I have my laptop next to me and then my monitors. But with SMC, it's quite fast. Yeah. Especially if you're on the one minute and your market is skewing. If you do have a laptop, you've got to be switching between the two. And yeah. I think it'll be quite hard. So I wouldn't like to um, trade without being at my setup. The way I trade now... Mm. Um, if you're using like limits and stuff and fair enough, you can kind of get around with on your phone. Yeah. Um, I know one girl actually who trades still on a phone and trades the seconds, which I still think is crazy. I don't know. I <laughs> that's do that's ludicrous. I was like, I wouldn't try without that trader system, but that's massive to be fair. That's helped a lot as well. It has, you know, actually. And uh, I remember originally when I heard about it, I was like, I like the idea of it, but I was like, oh, it seems I've never traded, I've never used a uh, MT4. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So I was a bit worried, like, oh, will I be able to get used to it? But it's the same thing. It's like just experience, like just yeah. don't, fear of the unknown and all that. Like you're just holding yourself back a bit. Yeah. Uh, it's very helpful for definitely for SMC, I would say. Because yeah. uh, especially for the risk uh, calculation. Yeah. Because if it's I used to use an app called Stinu. I used right. that as well. Yeah, and it was, it was a good start, app. They started charging as well, didn't they? Did, they? they right. Yeah, they did. I didn't <laughs> mind too much because it was like, what? No, nah, it was like it was 15 temp- quid a year. Yeah. yeah. But um, though it was good, it didn't work out, obviously, uh, commissions or spreads. Yeah, and uh, also, it wasn't always the most, most accurate, mm. right? Uh, it was it was always pretty accurate. Though. But, um, but of course, in terms of risk, you want to be risking the right amount. Yeah. You don't want to be risking over and no. you also don't want to be risking under. No. So the trade assist really, really helps. Yeah. And especially, as you said, if you're doing market execution, even if you're doing the limits, um, you know, if let's say you've watched for a one minute break and then the one minute breaks and you have to quickly go on Stinu, work out the lot size, then jump onto MT4. You're stressing. Set, yeah, you're yeah. stressing, you're rushing when really on that you can just click and drag. And yeah, it's great. good for, I don't personally do partials, but it's good. You can sell it up for yeah, like when it, it literally does it everything. automatically for yeah. you. Yeah. As soon as you get in the trade, you, if you've got it all set up right, you can just go and do. That's the beauty. That's one thing that a lot of people don't do though. No. Is they don't they don't predetermine their take profit, no. and it's a is a massive change in my trading mm. and consistency because yeah. now all of a sudden I'm not just placing a trade and not knowing, you know, what I'm looking for. Like don't get me wrong, structure wise, okay, I'm targeting this high. Yeah. But usually what happens is you trick yourself into thinking that this trade could be a big one. Yeah. Right? yeah. Especially with our styles, like this risk to war could be amazing. It could reach that for yeah. yeah. When really though, I've seen the most consistent traders, personally from the Vipers, for example, uh, the ones who have gotten fully funded and on the scaling plans and, and uh, you know, funded their personal six figure accounts yeah. from prop firms, they take consistently one to three, one to five, one to every five. single yeah, yeah. in every single trade they're taking partials at yeah. those Points. That's the massive thing I've seen as well since I've been in there. Everyone's like smashing it and it's one to fives, one to threes. And like the good thing about it as well, when you see them post the charts, they're like, I'm done for the day. Yeah. And that's good to see because a lot of people will hit one to five and then go, oh, there's yeah. another one there. Yeah. But you, that's all that you need. 
Well, that's what we try and focus on. Like for me, I try and focus on what can you repeat every single day? What yeah. gives you freedom? I try and answer, I try and ask these particular questions so that rather than I obviously give the answer to the questions yeah. as well, but I try and ask the questions so that people can then be like, hey, let me ask myself this mm -hmm. question, you know, because um, cause I've been through it. And I think as a teacher or as a mentor, or even just as someone on social media trying to add value, that's the mindset you need to be taking is like, what did I struggle with? Mm. What helped me? Mm. What what is it that um, you know people sort of fall into the trap of? You know, and it's and, one to hundred trades they see. Yeah, on one there. to a hundred trades. It's the you know thinking that there's a trade opportunity every single day. Yeah. Which the thing is, like I said, there's there is a, a trade opportunity every day. Every every minute, there's probably a trade opportunity mm. if you want to define it as that. But it's about what is enough for you. Mm. What can you be consistent full time on? So I've I currently started this uh, twelve week mentorship. Yeah, yeah. Um, as a test, not only uh, a test of me as mm. a teacher. Yeah. Uh, but as a test to see what is possible inside 12 weeks we're focused so i only took 12 people on okay. right um for 12 weeks to just focus on those 12 people and getting them from where they are to where they want to be right yeah as part of that though on the first call i learned their financials i want them to i want to know what their financial situation is and um as are they part all at similar levels or they're pretty, different? pretty similar yeah, pretty yeah. similar in terms of uh, where they're at yeah, yeah. um difference in uh, when they've started Mm. Uh, traded like how long yeah. they've been trading but in terms of where they're at very very similar yeah. um but what's very interesting as part of that sheet which shout out to my friend thomas for because <laughs> i'm not good with google sheets but i said to him like bro could you uh just edit one of your sheets and give me so shout out to yeah, thomas yeah. for that um but anyway this sheet it, it, he made it so that it collects obviously what their outgoings are mm. and then it works out off that what size account they need okay um to be you know and, and percent and you yeah. can input obviously how much percentage return per month yeah. we've uh, he inputted on there obviously the tax amount as well yeah of what you would need to pay tax so then you can obviously work out exactly the account yeah. after tax but then also we put in what you need uh, after the prop firm split as well yeah so we're working out basically the account you need to cover your current expenses mm. so you know most people and most people at home no doubt would be the same position where they would act they probably think they need 100k 200k when really a lot of people can literally be full time making 10% or 30k yeah. 20k i think that's the the big thing people worry about making 10k in a month but start trying to cover your wage first or your yeah. outgoings yeah. first and then you can start to progress that's it i yeah. think the lifestyle as well people as soon as they'll get funded they'll try and live the lifestyle but you got to kind of cut your lifestyle back a bit and cut mm. them expenses as much as you can as yeah. long as you're happy and then go from there and slowly progress you just increase it slowly it's like exactly yeah. slowly like one step at a time so like as you said like cover your expenses first or your income yeah. first right so let's say if you made 2k and suddenly you're making 2k from trading understand yeah. though that now you're making 4k double right you've yeah. doubled your amount yeah. so adjust to that and that Don't, could have been that could have been like 20 minutes of work exactly and you're done for the month yeah exactly it's crazy yeah, yeah. And uh, that's the opportunity we have. And uh, only through discipline can we take advantage of that, right? Yeah. So like, if you have that double in your income, adjust to that. If you do that for three, four months, yeah. now you can adjust, okay, now I can reduce the hours here or mm. I can increase slightly in, in expenses here, mm. slightly, mm. but I can increase more importantly, my cash buffers, you yeah. know, if they're not there yet, I that's can get rid of debts, thing. you know? Buffers, yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, it's always the same things. The funny thing is like, it's always the same, you know, sort of advice that yeah. you, you will hear from pretty much any trading related podcast yeah. uh, or investing related podcast or business uh, related You hear podcasts. it so much because that's kind of the right thing to do. It's whether they do it or not, like yeah. building that cash buffer, dropping that lifestyle. Yeah, that's it. Like, that's one thing I said to someone um, recently is like, it all comes down to your intention, right? So like you could read a book, you could say, I'm going to read a book, right? And then say, I'm going to read 10 pages a day. Mm. But if you don't actually go and read it, yeah. you're not going to get any benefit no. right but what is you know what it makes you read it is when you decide i'm going to go read that book yeah you know regardless of what what's happening what time it is or if you don't want enjoy reading like mm. the, when does that change happen when do you start to gain is when you've decided hey i'm going to go read that book yeah same with anything though like we're trading same thing like if you've been struggling a lot of people struggle with the same stuff mm. over and over like mm. greed or stacking trades or lack of patience it's always the same stuff when will it change is when they've decided yeah. right i think there's a quote it's something like when the pain of the pain of the staying the same is more greater than the pain of changing. Yeah. Then you'll change, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, until they realize that, hey, look, I don't want to experience this anymore, and the only way this is going to change is if I, if I change, right? And I pers purposefully change, obviously, uh, my mindset. Um, then they'll start to see a difference in results. Yeah. 
Um, but a lot of people don't do that. No, I think all of the successful traders, they failed the most. Um, and that failure, that failure, there's a lot of lessons to failure. So um, yeah, I think it's massive to kind of turn a bad into a good um, and then go from there. Yeah, no, it is. And um, one thing I was going to ask you though, is what is it like, because I don't know, have you done any sort of social media thing like uh, like you know, a podcast or anything like that before? Mm, uh, obviously, Atom brought out that book, what I think you featured in as well. With the yeah, interviews. yeah. Yeah, so big shout out to him. Definitely. Um, that was massive. Um, that's kind of the only thing I did. Um, obviously, he gave us questions and then we just answered them. Um, and I think that's massive. Obviously, I would have loved that when I first started trading because you get an insight into, I think it was like 14 traders or something like that, um, an insight into all of their stories and stuff like that. And then he's got the the bit of the start. Um, he's just his own journey, right? in general, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's massive. I think that's given a lot of lessons to um, to new traders and also experienced traders because like you say, if you, if you don't network, you don't hear other people's stories. You don't hear other yeah. people's journeys. And I think when it starts to relate, oh, I'm on a similar journey to that. I've had similar experiences. Then you can kind of reach out and message them and kind of like stay accountable for each other. Definitely, definitely. And, uh, you know, big shout out to him again because uh, there's something unique. I really enjoyed that yeah. because, uh, you know, you see courses, you see nicey markup channels, you see all sorts of the same yeah, stuff. Yeah. But uh, a book that was new and yeah, I, I really uh, I really thought that was uh, unique and I really liked the idea and the way you went about it as well yeah um, some great yeah. traders on there yeah exactly some and uh, as you said like learning from the experience that's why I like the, that book uh, Market Wizards is yeah. very popular because you're learning from um, you're learning from experience you know you're learning from mm. other people's experience yeah. and you get to hear what do they struggle with what is their advice to you know this particular question or this particular circumstance so um, no, it was really, really good. I was a really big honor as well because I was like, hey, now I can claim that I'm in a, uh, an Amazon <laughs> in a book. top seller. That's yeah. what I said to him. I was like, I didn't think I'd be in a book two years on. <laughs> that's it. That's what I said. I remember I said to him, like, uh, you know, even though this is your accolade, I get to claim it too. Yeah. <laughs> I get to I get to put my name on there. I was like, hey. It did really well on there. It was like top seller for a bit. That's it was like, I mean, really yeah, well. Man. When he messaged me, I was like, wow. But yeah. Really good, man. He's quite it. young. I didn't even realize. Yeah. Well, he's... a lot of you guys are young. I yeah, didn't even realize. Um, even, uh, Mansa, for example, he was young and he's, his, yeah, yeah. his sort of. Uh, mindset is yeah his really mindset is inc inc incredible yeah. i love it yeah. and then when he was when he said he was young i was just like wow like i think he's <laughs> he a little bit i think he's like 20 is he 22 or something like that i think he is like 22 23 yeah. something like that but um, yeah but yeah i look up to him massively massively he's a great guy he's meant to be here right now yeah, but i've got to see it, he decided yeah. <laughs> he's not ready yet nah he kind of sticks to himself which i respect i respect that 100%. he's humble he's he, Obviously I said we'll get him on, we'll blur his face. <laughs> yeah. We'll distort we'll distort his uh, voice like he's on the news. Put a on him. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But I'm yeah. surprised you know how many people do that in London though. Yeah. I've, I've seen, seen people where they're on scooters and they're just they're wearing Branaclavas in the heat like this. Yeah, I'm, it was boiling. I'm so confused. I'm like, <laughs> why? <laughs> why are we doing this? Uh, yeah. I think Atom's just turned eighteen. Yeah, yeah. And there's so another, another guy, um guy called Jason, I think he's from Jamaica. I think he's just turned eighteen as well, and he's amazing unreal trader so like I can imagine getting younger, 10 years younger. time yeah it's crazy that's what I said to Atom like um, I just say to him like imagine you in 5-10 years time it's going to be crazy so yeah you got people delayed look people the trains are messing everyone up <laughs> these guys are from London they're going to be late Ooh, they're going to be late because they're uh the trains are That's what I left at half nine. <laughs> you decided was, to come 45 like, minutes yeah, early. I'm an hour early. <laughs> oh man. It's a nice change though. It's a nice mm. change. Trust me. Um, but yeah, you know, in terms of uh, like, what do you get up to outside? I know obviously you're a football fan. Yeah. But what do you get up to outside of trading? Like, and how does that, how would you say that helps you to have different hobbies, different interests? Um, I play, I play football quite a lot. Um, I kind of took a step back when we hit COVID. I was playing, uh, I played semi-professional before. Um, mm -hmm. So at a good level um, when I was younger. But um, yeah, football is amazing. I'm getting back into it now. Um, like Sunday league football, it probably won't make much sense to you, but it's I mean, Cal here. yeah people come yeah Cal's <laughs> Cal, Cal plays football like <laughs> seven days a week honestly but um yeah football's a massive one um obviously going to watch games as well Forest fan so me and Cal we need to go to a Forest game this season <laughs> <laughs> but um gym as well um that's a big one I've just started PT with my cousin um so it's good I was doing two sessions with him a week mm -hmm. um I do know my stuff but it's good like you said to have someone there um yeah He's very, very strict with me, very hard with me, but it's been going really well. Um, 
I've seen a difference already. I think I've been doing about four or five weeks now, um, so that's going really well. Um, but yeah, I've kind of, I used to, obviously when I turned 18, I used to go out quite a bit, but it doesn't really appeal to me anymore. Mm. I hate nightclubs. Like, all, I, hate I hate them. Like my mates are always saying, oh, you're boring, oh, you this. I'd rather just like go to the pub for a drink or something. I don't really drink much Nightclub anymore. vibes are weird, man. No, I honestly. hate like, it. I find, I'll like, always be gone by 12. Like, yeah, honestly, I'll just like, disappear. I never understood the appeal of them. Ever. <laughs> like, they're so grimy and dirty. Mm. There's like pretty much everyone's getting molested in there, yeah. especially all the girls. They're yeah. just getting molested in there. And I think it's uh, like, it's mental because yeah. if you just take that same situation from in there and just put it outside, they get someone's getting arrested. Yeah, yeah. But for some reason, it's like this un, unwritten rule that it's okay yeah. inside a club and it's, yeah, mad. it's mad. And then normally a fight will happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, though I love fighting, <laughs> Uh, I very quickly because I, I never went clubbing in, in like, like 18 yeah. or anything like that I know I went when I was uh, for like a few months when I was like 21 or something mm. like that and um, I never obviously I'd trained in fighting for so long Yeah, not that I'm, I'm like yeah. a Bruce Lee or anything, but <laughs> I trained in fighting for so long because I enjoyed it and I could hold my own but I never got into a fight until I started going clubbing. Yeah. And that's where I started finding that I was in, I was getting into fights for no reason. It's absolute idiots out there. That yeah. Literally like you'll but like there's people who go out with the intention. Yeah, yeah. Their yeah. intention is that it's not a good night unless no. we've had a fight. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I met people like that. Yeah. And then that they're the sort of people I had to get away from because I was like, that is the, that mindset is fucked up. Like yeah. what is the, where is your head at yeah. for you to, that to be part of your enjoyment list, you know? I think it's to people like that, they just live for the weekend as well. Yeah, yeah and they do. Yeah. It's just not the way I want to be, like Monday to Friday, smash it out the weekend, then Monday, then it's just the same thing over and over again. Like, where are we going this week, where are we going that week? But yeah, I've never really enjoyed clubbing. Um, if I did go out, it'd be for like a big like a birthday or something, but yeah, I'd not for really a reason, be gone. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't go out just like on a random, random one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's good though, man, because like, especially at your age to be able to say that as well. Yeah. Because, um, you know, that's when it's so easy to fall into the trap. Mm -hmm. I think it, you know, a lot of things that uh, end up sort of um, being a struggle in your later, you know, say 20s mm -hmm. into 30s, for example, are just habits that you build up. Like a yeah. You're so used to going out and living for the weekend yeah. that it's second nature to you. You know what I mean? It's I think, just like yeah. your routine is that. You ruin your 20s though. Like people say you're young, go have fun, but the way I see it, the age I'm at now, this is the time to work. Like this yeah. is the time to put Just having that balance, then, isn't it? So like yeah. like you did, you went, you, you're working and grinding out and then through that hard work, you then enjoyed something, um, that final, Yeah, yeah. you know? Like bringing my missus to London, taking my exactly, dad out. Exactly, yeah, like so that. it's like yeah. that balance. Like yeah. I do say, I do agree with people when they say, uh, have fun when you're younger. The only reason being is that you're never going to get that time back. No, and that true. youth, is yeah, something yeah. that does diminish. Like I'm only 27, but yeah. I know the difference in my sort of energy and and just a slight difference in those sort of things. It was when you said trip the other day on that podcast. He was like, I'm too old. <laughs> that made me laugh. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But they, they're sort of dying. <laughs> but I'm a dad as well now. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I get to tell these sort of dad jokes. <laughs> they're terrible. Like sometimes I think like it's it's a funny joke. And my wife's just like, that's a dad joke. And, she's like, and I'm like, but I'm a dad though. She's like, no, just don't say it. Um, but no, they, they, I do understand where people come from. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's a balance. Like, yeah. yes, you know, it's, it, it, it's both the same reason because you're youthful. Yeah, because you're youthful and um, maybe maybe have less responsibility. For example, as well, you can grind out, yeah. work harder, right? You've got that energy to do so too. Yeah. However, you never get that time back either. No. So that energy and that thing, you never get that time back. Like that's the one thing the way if you speak to like uh, super successful people and said, hey. If you could give back all your money, what would you? you know, they would always say, go, to back. Just, you know, "Go back in time mm. to have that time back." Not because they don't appreciate the money and they didn't enjoy the success, but it's just because you can never get that back time back. Nah. That's the one thing that's always going forward and yeah, never go backwards, nah. and you never get to experience that again. Uh, but I think you're doing it right. I think you're doing the right balance, and yeah. uh, especially for where you're at, um, you know, you can probably work even harder now, say until you're 25, for example. Mm. Then you can don't not turn it back, but then you will actually have so much to be able to enjoy and take advantage of at such a young age because you've put that focus in, you know? It's like we've said, I think a few of us do want to travel in the new year. Mm -hmm. um, I know Manza's down for it. The guy who lives near me called Mikey, he wants to go. Um, we've got a friend out in Thailand at the minute who's in Phuket. Mm -hmm. um, so we do want to go out there and do a few months, but like going out there, that's going to be a big challenge because Obviously, we do want to work, but obviously, it's Thailand. Like, you want to have some fun. Yeah. Um, going out to the beaches, uh, traveling and stuff like that. That's something what I want to do while I'm young. Um, so, yeah, that's something that I'm working towards. 
um, wanting to travel wherever I go for two months. Travel's one of months. the best things, yeah. honestly. Travel, uh, that's the one thing, not that I regret, um, but I didn't do yeah. uh, before. It doesn't matter if I was married or not, but like when I was younger, yeah. was uh, doing like a sort of a, a backpacking or solo uh, sort of travel, just some getting out of my element yeah. uh, sort of uh, in that way because the, the growth experience the growth and obviously the memories mm. uh that you can have from doing a trip like that is incredible yeah uh like i traveled i've traveled quite a fair bit i was gonna say i thought you traveled quite a lot i have traveled quite a bit um but i've never done a trip like that i've not yeah. i've not traveled alone for a period of time or traveled and stayed somewhere yeah for a period of time like that we've been looking like um like the villas and stuff they're really cheap out there they are they're they really are. good obviously i have four get them. three or four of you um, obviously we're all traders we're all doing the same thing I think it's going to be amazing so that's the main thing I'm working towards at the minute I think so, I think you guys will have a good balance for the people that I know who I think would be involved yeah. in that I think like in terms of work and uh, and place or balance yeah. you guys will be alright because you guys know and understand what it's about and uh, what's needed because that's the thing with trading as well like drinking and stuff mm. um, I think I talked about this last one as well like drinking or smoking weed and it inhibits your clarity Yeah. right and, and therefore you know if, for example, like the people I used to work for, they used to be known as the top traders and all that, but mm. they were pissed and yeah. just on drugs all the time. Yeah. So really the alarm bells ring because it's like, how can you be a consistent trader if you're you out of your mind? Um, it doesn't go hand in hand. So no. like, I, you guys I already know would have a great balance, but I love the idea yeah. because that is something, again, through networking, you wouldn't yeah. be able to, no, not no. that you won't be able to do it, but like you wouldn't be able to have that experience with other people. I wouldn't want to do it on my own, to be honest. Yeah. If I wouldn't, if I, if we didn't have a plan to go in a group, I wouldn't want to do it on my own. Mm. Uh, I don't blame you, yeah, I don't blame you. So. But that's a, uh, it's a very uh, nice place of it. Yeah. I've not been, I Hopefully. need to go. But um, yeah, I mean, what Shane, Shane who's out there at the minute, what he sends us, it looks amazing, like the sunsets, beaches, mm. stuff like that. And it's just really cheap out there to be fair. Obviously the flights have gone up quite a lot now because they did have they still did have restrictions in Thailand. I think they've all been dropped now. They've been dropped. So the, fly, the flights have in. flew up. It's summer, summertime um, right yeah. now. That's why. So hopefully we'll You just gotta go in monsoon Last season. minute booking. <laughs> <laughs> but um no, but it sounds amazing. Like, I've been looking at Thailand as well. Like I keep thinking like I enjoy London, but I do keep thinking like I wanna experience somewhere new. Yeah. I was looking at Canada the other day. I was looking at... It's Marco from... Is Marco, yeah, Marco's from Canada, Canada yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was looking at Canada the other day, but then I don't want the trading hours of Canada. So yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Sack that off. Honestly, I was like, it's a nice place, but I was like, no. And I was looking at Florida. I was like, nope. Because again, I was just like, why would I do that to myself? Like, I might enjoy... I will definitely enjoy the experience of living in a new place. And Canada's nice. I've been there and I really enjoy the uh, the culture and the people there. Uh, I've not been to Florida, so I can't say I would want to move there yet. But... Um, I was just thinking in trading wise, it yeah, doesn't yeah. make sense, yeah. right? Because it's just going to, I'm just going to be cutting off all this trading time, just New York pretty much yeah, uh, yeah. in terms of routine. So I was like, no. Uh, but then obviously Dubai's on there. Then I'm thinking Dubai is pretty much like London, just in Dubai. Mm. So I was like, maybe. How many times have you been to Dubai? Dubai have been three times. Three times. Three times, I think, yeah. Yeah. I want to say three, maybe three. Four. I think three. Okay. Um, have you been to Dubai? No, it's on my list. It's on my list. You enjoy it though. But like, if you go to Thailand, just stop on the way. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think they do a flight which stops off in Dubai. So maybe we did like a day or two there. Yeah, no, but. Dubai Dubai's nice, man. Like Dubai, the thing with Dubai is it's the growth, right? Yeah. Because it's fully man-made in the sense that, you know, it's only pretty much the whole city was made in the last yeah. 20, 30 years. They can make it as good as they want, yeah. right? Because it's just a blank canvas. Yeah, yeah. Um, plus like the growth that they will have over the next, so you've seen what they've done in 30 years, mm. in the next 30 years, yeah. 100 years, it's gonna be like an LA, like a you know, yeah. like a major uh, city for, for the Arab nations, if you will, it already is. Mm. Uh, and they've set the blueprint for the Arab nations because a lot of the Arab nations, uh, I say nations, the Arab countries, sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they were pretty much cut off. Like they weren't really tourist attractions as much. Yeah. But now from Dubai, they, they've set the blueprint. They're like, so Saudi Arabia trying to follow suit. So you're going to see, I think, a lot of growth over in the uh, in the uh, Arab uh, countries. Yeah. Like we said, networking out there as well, that would be massive. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. The people out there. Yeah, 100%. Dubai is like people. full of successful people. Yeah. Uh, the networking is incredible. The sort of events that you'll see there as mm. well. Obviously, the, the tax climate at the moment is still favorable. But that will change. Though. That's the thing. So once it grows, say over the next hundred years, they will have income tax. So yeah, yeah. That will all change because it has to as things grow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but then obviously Dubai was on the list and I was looking at, I was thinking about Thailand. I was thinking about Bali because obviously you hear about the lifestyle and the cost. I saw that thing in Bali. I saw it on Lab Bible. I don't know how true it is. I know I'll be shared it, but it was a saying if, um, the tax. if you work from home, yeah, it's yeah. tax free there, which is kind of mad. Um, 
that's very appealing. <laughs> no, it definitely is. It is because um, you know, as a trader, um, you know, the the potential of making large sums of money is there, and obviously, if you're paying large amounts in tax, it mm. really does take the take its toll. It does, yeah. Um, and yeah, so like places like Dubai, places like uh, I think Puerto Rico is one, and and uh, there are actually quite a decent number of yeah. list of countries where the tax. Uh, on trading profits is significantly lower or zero, yeah. so it makes no sense. It makes like complete sense why you would want to then move. Like so, for me, like Dubai is where I'm looking to go. Yeah, uh, especially because obviously having a kid as well, uh, I want her to grow up in a in a safe place. Like the one major benefit for me in in, in Dubai is that I don't worry about um, my wife or baby. Mm. I don't worry about anything because I know it's such a safe place. Like I know that like, they could go anywhere. If they're out, I'm not worried about. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, happen. yeah. While in London. Or not just London, but England as a whole, it's, or it's, other countries yeah. I've been to as well. You worry because it's yeah. just like anything can happen. Yeah. But in Dubai, even though anything can happen, it, it yeah, won't right. happen. Yeah, I've heard very yeah. strict there. Yeah, they are very, very strict there. But the thing but is, it's that's the way where, to be. Because if you're if you're going to be that strict, but pretty much give the public guaranteed that they will be safe. Yeah. Then do exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah. But whereas here, you, they're strict, not, but the, yeah, yeah, there's there's no safety. No. Uh, people are getting robbed in broad daylight and like literally in streets like this yeah. outside, you know, central London, yeah, getting yeah. robbed of their watches yeah. and their purses and their yeah, phones. It's mad. And uh, and yeah, like it's, it's a great point. I know that uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his first name? Cobra uh, Cobra Tate. I can't remember his actual name though. Yeah, that's that's what, what he says about. Yeah, yeah, and it's one of his interviews. That's the thing. You're with him, right? And social media personalities. Like people don't. A lot of people don't realize that. He does that on purpose. Like yeah. he says such controversial and fucking crazy shit to get the clout. Yeah, to get yeah. the clout, just get the the thing. But he will say it alongside some very truthful, yeah, and very, uh, very um, sort of eye opening stuff too. Yeah. Um, but one thing I learned recently, I didn't realize about him is that well, do you have, he makes five million it's, a month from his course. Yeah, you know that. It's and insane. his course is basic. That. It's insane. His course, he he basically just chooses anything, whether it's crypto trading, shop drop shipping. It was like he, thirteen different ways to make money, or something. Yeah, so like let's say there's thirteen ways, Plus but then university. each one of them will have like yeah. just thirteen or your basic videos, yeah, right? Yeah. Really basic videos, and it only costs I think I can't remember what it was like fifty dollars or something. Yeah. But he has a hundred thousand members in there, right? He was saying like some sixteen-year-old just makes money off reposting his TikToks, yeah, like ten k a month. But this is the thing. So he he has a pyramid scheme. Essentially, yeah, yeah. so basically, the people in there can make money from getting other people to sign up. Mm, yeah, and the way they do it is they make they will make accounts, social media accounts. Yeah, and that's why you see him everywhere yeah, because yeah. for them to make money, they will then make fake, uh, not fake, but like uh, fan accounts. And then put the link in. Put all the links in. Put all the. All, that's why they'll just like put his content out everywhere. Yeah, yeah. that's why you'll find like it will be called like Tate Talks. Take this, take that. It's like a clip this, of him talking, and there's like GTA or something like playing in the background. <laughs> that's it, that's it, and then that's it, and then he's just—it's oh, incredible. Imagine yeah. five million yeah. a month from doing what Stupid. he's done. Um, it's incredible, and that's why, like, even though he'll say he'll make money from all these other avenues, it might not even be the case because mm. he's making five million. Like five million a month is incredible mm. numbers. <laughs> the <laughs> lifestyle you can live on five million a month is insane, yeah, right? Yeah. And it can—it's literally the lifestyle that he's living. Like to. Think about it, if he's making five million a month, he can buy a Bugatti. He's, I think he's month. bought another one, yeah, yeah. it's insane. So, um, yeah, man, like it just goes to show that, like, if you put your mind to something and you're not, because you, you, I'm sure, don't get me wrong, I'm sure it wasn't easy for him to no. like, kind of put this persona out there, especially in the beginning. Mm. But if you don't fear and you don't care about other, what other people think, think and you're willing to sort of just put yourself out there, yeah. You can grow. It's don't like get me wrong, people, I'm sure there's a lot of people who hate haters, him, yeah. Right? And I'm not like, the biggest fan of him but i do enjoy like seeing the character you know seeing yeah. the character and some of the things like we just talked about there in terms of like the safety that's a very valid point yeah and it makes you think like why am i getting taxed out my ass on every little thing that i do yeah. uh if they can't even go and guarantee so. can't even guarantee our safety you can't even give us a you know a, a running system like look we're all everyone in the country is getting fucked by energy prices mm. now and nothing they've not done anything no. about it now for people like me and you Though it still impacts us, for example, luckily because of the position we're in, it's not the end of the world. No. But there are so many people where that increase is, is devastating. Yeah. Right? Because most people, do, like you said, they live for the weekend, live for a week. And though it's not necessarily a bad mindset in terms of if they're happy, they're happy, that's fine. Mm. Um, but most people don't have financial foundations. So then having this increase suddenly in the outgoings with no control, they have no other option. No. They can't go here, they can't go there. It's just devastating. They, yeah. they literally, what can they do? Get a higher paying job? If I'm sure if they could, they would have already, yeah, so they yeah. can't. 
And then what's all, all that's going to happen is debts are going to uh, start stacking up. Mm. And it's just uh, insane, mm. absolutely insane. And, you know, I do really feel for people who are going through it right now. And uh, I just, I wonder where we're going to be, you know, in the next in 12, 24 months. Yeah. Like what, where, where are things going to fall? You know, depends who takes over Boris Johnson. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. <laughs> the funny thing is, I'm pretty sure I've seen like I know there was Rishi Sunak. I know there was uh, that something Javed. I know there was uh, like three or four. I'm yeah. pretty sure I've seen like six or seven different names pop uh, yeah. up. Yeah. I'm like, how many people want this? I like, saw a video the other day, and it was I think it was the head of education or something, some woman. She was like sticking a bit of finger up at the like public, I saw it, yeah. And it's that's gone everywhere. I think she was meant to do it. At, I think she was trying to do it. At uh, Boris Johnson. I think. Oh really? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, I read that. Uh, but yeah, bro. Honestly, when I think about it, it's like who I would not want to take over right now. No, now would be like the worst time to yeah. take over, unless they can take over and do some good, which I highly doubt they never do. No. Um, politics is a funny game, man. Honestly, I remember yeah. when uh, COVID was happening, and everyone had this conspiracy that Donald Trump was a savior. Yeah, he was uh, this QAnon and all this stuff, and I was like, I was like, it, it got to a point where I nearly believed it. <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> He's gonna save the world. And then. Um, and I was just watching it more and more. And like people were like, "Yeah, he's coming back." You know, he like mm. failed the thing. He's like they're gonna do this. You know, doing a like open the the, the sealed ballots and yeah, you know, yeah. recount and all this. And then nothing happened. I was just like, "Wow, <laughs> yeah, like, it's a wow. crazy world." It is a crazy, crazy world, world. honestly. Like I landed. Imagine I landed in New York the day he got he won the election because mm. uh, I went for that UFC fight. Yeah. And the day I landed, I literally landed and found out he won. And then there was this massive protest in New York. Jesus. And they were they had school buses of people getting arrested for like protesting. And uh it was just wild, like to think New America's York. a different world as well, isn't it? America's a whole different world. Yeah. Bro. I've like, been there when I was younger, but I haven't been there since. They got a whole different culture over yeah. there. And like that's what I love about travelling though. So like I can imagine I haven't been to Thailand. Yeah. But I can imagine like Thailand probably has a whole different vibe, mm. you know, a whole different vibe to anywhere else we've probably been. Mm. Um but yeah, like it's so good. Like New York, you would love New York. Do you like London? Yeah, except for it's busy. I don't like the busy part, but like getting about and stuff mm. and the the opportunity of what to do is big. Yeah. Like you'd, you'd love New York though, cause, yeah, especially because it's in a different country. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll feel a different vibe, but it is, yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty busy. <laughs> it's pretty busy. It's like the tube last night. I was like, oh my God, it's rammed. I was like, I'm hot. I want to be home. Oh, that's nasty, honestly, that tube. But, but it's no. nasty. You know, like during, I was saying to you, during COVID, it was ghost town. Absolutely yeah. ghost town. That's I saw like pictures and stuff. It's mad. Yeah. No worries, but I think uh, we've gone for quite a while. I think over mm. over an hour. I think we'll uh, probably wrap it up. Have you got anything? I try. I don't know if you got anything like going on or any sort of last messages for the people. Uh, not really. No, just sticking to myself. Just any wor words of wisdom? Uh, I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, Put you on the spot. There, the hot seat. <laughs> All I'd say to new people is just to kind of ensure you invest in the right education like do your research before and yeah a lot of people you'll fail a lot but you've just got to keep going back to your why every time mm -hmm. and just use that if your why is that big to keep motivating you then it, it will um and i think you can't really fail until you quit really um i think that's the massive thing i'm sure you've been there a lot of times where you've been close to quitting or you've thought mm. about it like even when you lose trade you're like are you really can you trade yeah but it's just it's it's the reality of trading like you'll lose but it's just about whether you're going to bounce back and do mm -hmm. even better that makes the massive difference so yeah no i couldn't agree more and i think it's uh, very true like not just in trading but in life like you know yeah. you're not just gonna be happy all the time no, you're no. gonna have those knocks and that's what usually it's those knocks that build you to the next person yeah. take you to that next level yeah. take you to where you want to be next so no i couldn't agree more well yeah thank you for coming down massive privilege. Um, thank you for no, definitely we'll definitely do this again yeah uh, Mansa when you're ready <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you that's it that's it but thank you everyone for watching once again uh, you know, drop a like drop a comment with what you know, your biggest takeaway was and we'll catch you on the next video <laughs> <laughs>